Squire and Love. And I am Dr. Shari Calicur, creator of Dr. Mrs. And, and together, together we we're are the Hexabells. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, back, back. 2019. Ew, ew. <laughs> so um, this is our first episode of the year and we're <laughs> looking forward to an exciting year in 2019. Yes, and we hope you are too. We are so excited about what's to come. Um, last season was so great. We had like such great feedback. Um, we learned a lot from last season, so mm-hmm. we're hoping to come back even better this season. Yeah. Um, we had our first event last year. Yes, which the, was so dope. Yeah, it was the, the Black, Black Effect Brunch. We brought a bunch of women together. Some great women, yeah, really. And yeah. they were able to talk about self-care and some of the issues they face in their lives, their marriages, careers. And it was very mm-hmm. personal mm-hmm. and on, open and honest. Yes. Um, and I was actually very surprised because, you know, you never know how things like that are going to go, especially when you're in a room um, of people that don't mm-hmm. know each other, if people are, are going to really feel the safe space that you created. Yeah. Um, but I think that was the amazing part was like, we were kind of for all intents and purposes, like in the middle of this restaurant, like we were, we were cut off, but like mm-hmm. we were in this restaurant with like 25 women that didn't know each other and just created this really beautiful experience. Yeah, so the um, best part was the safe space. Yes. I think everyone felt comfortable enough to speak mm-hmm. and tell their truth and their yes. stories. Yes, I appreciate it. definitely. And us too. Yeah. Even though we came prepared yes. <laughs> to share some stories. But yeah, we had a great time. So our next event is going to be on January the 19th. Vision We're board. hosting a vision board party. Woo! Okay, so full disclosure for myself, I did my first vision board last year. And I remember like for myself, I was like, I don't really like get the whole vision board thing. Like, but um, my friend was like, no, like, just come do it. So I'm like, okay, fine. Um, So we went, we did together. It was actually like kind of therapeutic, just kind of like going through the magazines because while we were going through, we were were catching up. Yeah. And talking and like talking about the things that we put on our board and, Mm -hmm. you know, what we want to put on our board, but we couldn't find in magazines and, you know, stuff like that. I've actually, I've been doing it for like the past two, three years. Mm -hmm. And like you say, like you kind of, you're going through the magazine, you're talking and then, but what's different is like when the people know each other, you're like, oh, you know, so-and-so, you would like this. I think this is like towards your goals. So I'm really interested to see like, what happens when a group of women who don't know each other yeah. and they're flipping through magazines and yeah. how they're like sharing yeah. and passing on exactly. like the, the vision. Yeah. You know? yeah. And and that's that's super dope. So again, that'll be January 19th. Um the event is up on Eventbrite. Um, the tickets are $15 and that's going to include, of course, wine. Uh, we'll have some light hors d'oeuvres and then everything that you need for the vision board. Um, the poster board, uh, glue or tape, and the magazines. Um, and of course, fun conversations with us, which are priceless. <laughs> <laughs> so you can um, you can um, head over to Eventbrite. You can find us there. Um, like I said, the tickets are $15. And then once you purchase your ticket, then you'll find out the location of the event. Come join so, us. Who doesn't love a little mystique? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so jumping right into the topic. Well, you skipped the wine. Oh. So the wine of today. I I don't know how you left out. Well, I do know how you left out the wine, but. (laughs) So our wine for today is a Malbec. (laughs) It's the Trapiche Malbec. I like it because it has trap. But it was really just because. (laughs) We're actually in the trap today. We are in the trap. (laughs) Uh, uh, uh. Okay, <laughs> but um, yeah. So it was actually so. What I like to do when I um, like in order to experience new wines is I'll get the Bogo wines from Publix. So this was one of the Bogo wines, the buy one get one um, from Publix, and I actually really like it as a red and especially as a Malbec. Like I feel like it's not too dry. I, I feel like it's another one of those wines that's kind of in between. Like even if you're a sweet drink, a sweet sweeter wine person like you would still enjoy it it tastes pretty good we're in a trap drinking the trap oh goodness (laughs) in the trap cheers to that drinking in the trap (laughs) (laughs) all right 
And now, and this is exactly why we on. This is why we in the trap right now. <laughs> this is our punishment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now. don't edit that out. <laughs> All right, so now jumping yes, jumping into, into the it. topic and um, what a topic it is. This is probably going to be one of our heavier uh, mm-hmm. topics that we're going to discuss, but I'm sure everyone by now. I mean, it's trending. You see it everywhere. You really can't escape it, even if you haven't watched it. Yeah. Um, the R. Kelly docu series. Well, it's really the victims docu series. Yeah. Um, but you know, before we get into it, I just I wanted to say I think what I One of the things I've noticed since it's been released is that a lot of people tend to lack empathy and a lot of people are arrogant in the in the way that they can't seem to picture themselves in the victim's shoes or how the victims became victims because their arrogance stems from a thinking that, you know, this could never be them or or anyone that they know. And I think it's just a lot of humans just naturally feel like something tragic could never happen to them i mean it's kind of why people text and drive because you think nothing bad could happen to you but yeah. that's not true um so it when i first watched it i mean it really it just captured me immediately because i was able to kind of just put myself in their position and see how that could happen to them and it made me i mean really emotional i think it was it was heartbreaking just to mm-hmm. watch it and i think anyone who doesn't understand how those girls could become victims and how they could be leaving seemingly normal lives and end up in a sex cult. I think you fail to appreciate how, you know, a few people got on a boat and enslaved an entire nation. I mean, the whole power struggle, <coughs> power manipulation and how you can trap people into doing things that they would never do. It's a real thing. It's a psychological thing. And it happens every single day. And it's historically happened in probably every part of history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely um, agree. So I was one of those people that didn't watch the docuseries because I felt like I already knew the story. Um, So I didn't really feel the need to spend six hours of my life about like watching this depressing series about, you know, these women and everybody and like every person I talked to is like, but you have to watch it like it's actually probably a lot worse than you think that it is so since I knew we were going to talk about it today like I I tried to watch a couple of the episodes and um, I definitely agree that it is a lot worse than what you thought and I think for me personally I mean I definitely agree with you um, that I think it is very um, ignorant to um, To look at these young children, or even though they're grown now, but to like know that these were like teenagers and like to remember yourself as a teenager and act like something like that would have never happened to you. You understand what I'm saying? Just because the opportunity wasn't presented to you, Mm -hmm. like not to say that you may have stayed in for the whole time, but like just think like perfect example B2K is going back on tour right now right when b2k was hot like everybody like we all loved b2k like my friend she used to like get tickets all the time like she had backstage tickets to meet them like all this stuff so you can't tell me like as a teenager like if you had the opportunity to meet b2k and like hang out with them on like a one-on-one basis that you like wouldn't take it Course, like I, I I just find it very hard to believe that that I just I just don't I just don't believe anybody that says that well they would have never gone or that would have never been them because if it's somebody that you idolize and adore if you have the chance to be around that person they're they're personally extending that invitation which is how mm-hmm. I took it a lot of the invitations to these young girls were personally extended or after personal interactions, you can't tell me that I'm going to be like, oh, well, my mama raised me to do A, B, and C. And I think that's a good point (laughs) because I think like the the defense that a lot of people are giving to that is that, well, you know, those, you saw what happened to Aaliyah. So why would you still go to that? 
And to me, that's not really a fault of the teens who still wanted to meet him. It's a fault of the industry who allowed his celebrity to continue beyond that. Yes. So if you see him, I mean, you don't know what goes on in the industry. You don't really know. You're not following. You don't know the, the real details of what happened with Aaliyah back then. Right. And um, when you see him still progressing, still making great music, still having all this clout, and you meet him and you idolize him, as you're saying, then mm -hmm. you're, you're going to get on that stage. Yeah. You're I gonna, mean, you are. You see him in the mall <laughs> and he wants to talk to you and your friend is like, girl, you better talk yeah, to him. Just like, I mean, we exactly. all have a friend who would have done that. Yeah, we all do. And so, so I think, I think number, number one, the lack of empathy is actually very sad. Um, and like I said, to, to think of yourself in maybe your present light and not necessarily your teenage light because. Because, like, we're all teenagers. You all do young and dumb stuff. Even mm -hmm. well into your early 20s. Maybe late 20s for some people. Shoot, people still acting up. They 40. Like, <laughs> but you know what, what I'm saying? Like, there's there's no, but especially when you're, when you're young, at least you have an excuse. Mm -hmm. Like, when you're young to not know any better. Because you truly haven't lived much of any type of real life. And real experiences with the opposite sex. And things like that, hopefully. You yeah. know, as 12 at 12 and 13 yeah, definitely. um so yeah I, I felt like that was one of the parts that I was very um concerned about and then the other part that I was very concerned about was like the amount of adults that were complicit that didn't do anything that were just knowingly out here like getting these girls from the mall that were like watching these tapes of him having sex with the girls um, that felt that something may have been wrong, but like didn't really push the issue. What shocked me a lot about that also is not only that they were complicit in it, but even in telling their truth and telling their stories in a documentary, they didn't acknowledge or accept their wrongdoing. They don't. They, it was like they don't. Fault. They and I don't understand how you. It's like and I so agree with you because I, in my mind, like when I'm watching, like I think it was his manager or something like yeah, that. Yeah, when he like, was like he, the, he <laughs> kept and you could tell like he was definitely like telling the truth, like telling <laughs> his truth. But it's like he didn't realize. Like I think he still felt like he had some type of like blameless act well the like, thing is what he thought he should have did was he thought he should have talked to her but what he should have did as an adult was grab her from that situation yeah. and say girl go home go to home. your family i'm not forging these documents and instead he said she looked at me like i should have said something to her no that, that was a that child was a cry for help and like, she wanted you to get her out of that situation and you didn't do yeah. it even if she didn't know she wanted to get out of that situation she wanted some help and yeah. you, you failed to do that and he didn't mm -hmm. acknowledge that I think he's he, he's focused most of his time blaming R. Kelly, which yes. obviously that's the predator. But yeah. it's like you play you a have part to look at, in that. You have to look at yourself. Mm -hmm. And there's there's a couple people. And like I said, I've only seen half of it. So I don't even I don't know all the players. But like even with Sparkle, like Sparkle oh. was like. I saw him trying these other girls. I would never let him try me like that. So why would you introduce your niece? niece? <laughs> Trying to make her a star. If you saw how he was treating people and you said, I will not put myself in that position. Like that's it. But the only thing with her is like she did. She did accept Blaine. I think that she really did was guilty about like her position there. Mm -hmm. But I still don't understand like to this time. Like as soon as I saw that, I was like, wait, literally you were just talking about how. You saw him doing A, B, and C, and you were saying, like, well, you're not going to do that. And, like, you were being defiant just because you mm -hmm. could. And, like, speaking to people because but real he said that people would, have been, don't introduce your would, it would be, like, <laughs> real defiance would have been, like, let me get myself out of the situation. Yeah. Like, if I'm in a place where that's so controlling that people can't even say hello to me. That's a red flag. And, and I don't know why people insist on looking past red flags, even yellow flags. Like, y'all got to start paying attention to these red flags and stop looking past Whatever them. Whatever the color flag. If it's a flag. If it's a flag. Pay attention. Even if it's a green one, make sure you can still go. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it's just amazing to me. Like, there's so many red flags and like, 
nobody picked up on it. Like, people picked up on it, but nobody acted on it. Yeah, I mean, the, like, the reality is it's not, it's not just a predator problem. It's the people who surround the predators who enable them to continue to do this, to empower them to do it, who feed into it. Yeah. And it's, it's I mean, it's, it's really, like, a difficult thing because it's, like, how do you really protect your girls from that? Because, like, for me, what resonated with me, what made me be able to empathize with them is that you think about the first time when you were a teenager or a young girl and you were sexualized. And it's like you weren't really, you didn't know how to be sexy. You probably, I mean, when I think about when I was 13, I don't think I looked sexy. I think I looked a hot mess. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you walk down the street and you're being catcalled by grown men and you feel disgusting. and You don't really know why or really understand it. But when you look back at it, it's like they're sexualizing you. And, you know, I ignored it. I knew it was wrong. Um, but then you think like, well, what if they were more persistent mm-hmm. and I was so scared? What was I going to do? Mm-hmm. If they followed me, they trapped me, they did whatever. It could have got a lot worse. And it's like girls, I, I, th- I want to say like probably every girl has dealt with that. Yeah. Every girl has to become a victim to that. But every girl has dealt with that. And it's like. Do you continually tell your girls to protect themselves or do you put the blame on the predator? Yeah. And I think probably a healthy combination of both. You do have to have a healthy combination of both. And I, but I think like um, having documentaries like that and sparking conversations like this, it just allows the conversation to shift from like, what did the girls do to like, do we really need to be blaming these mm-hmm. girls for whatever they were because doing or not doing? Sexy. Or what one of the girls said, and it's like what any girl would say. Mm-hmm. Because honestly, I had a conversation with my younger sister, and she said the same thing. Mm-hmm. One of the teenage girls, I think it was like the first like girl. I don't remember her name. <laughs> I think Lizette or something. The she Martinez. Said, she said that when she met him, she just really wanted to become a celebrity, a yeah, singer. A singer. Mm-hmm. She never thought that he would be interested in her because she was a child. Yeah. And he would, he had so many women around him that are older and more mature that he would be into. Yeah. I remember because I wanted to, I wanted to talk to my sister about it. So I did, you know, mention it and she was like, and one of the things that she said, it was her and her friend. They were like, well, I don't understand why he would want a little girl when he could have like all these models that are older. And it's like, cause you don't, when you're, when you're that age, you don't think of yourself as sexy and attracted to men. Yeah. But you have predators like him who are looking at you like that and you don't know. Yeah. No, I def I definitely agree with that, and um, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I would want my child to come home alive, so I would definitely would like to, you know, have these conversations with my child, like pr- provide them with any resources that they need, pepper spray, whatever they need to, like, make mm-hmm. sure they come home alive, and you know. If you got to, like, if, if someone is catcalling you, like, because when I was at home, I always had headphones on. So I would just, if, even if I could hear you, I just kept moving. Mm-hmm. I never stopped. I never stopped moving. Yeah. Same. I never stopped moving. And that is something that I will definitely pass down to my Keep male walking. and female yeah. children. Keep it's walking. just like, you, you don't owe anybody anything. The only person you owe anything is me and your daddy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I think you also have to be honest with them. Like, and just say it, flat out say it. Like, no one should touch you here or there. Oh, from a young age. You know? From a young age, I I have to have. And you know, even when they're going to preschool, you want, like, yeah, no matter how young they are, you have to tell them With my patients, like, because I see kids as well, especially my young kids, I'm always like, before I do any type of, like, private or, you know, invasive exams, I'm always like, so the only person that should be doing this is like your parents or your doctor. If this ever happens and it's not one of those three people mm-hmm. Then you need to let an adult know either me or your parents know. Like I even if that's so good. that's what I do for my patients. Like because even if they're, you know, everybody does whatever they want in their own households and their own families. But my job as a as a physician is to prepare you for anything that might arise. Mm -hmm. So whether you feel like it's important or not, I feel like it's important because I feel uncomfortable having to do this, but I have to do it because it's my job. So if I feel uncomfortable, everyone's going to feel uncomfortable. And you need to let, if something uncomfortable happens to you, you need to let everybody know that yeah. you're uncomfortable. I mean, it's not a comfortable conversation, but you have but to you have it. But you have to have it. So, I mean, because it's like, you, I mean, you want to, in a, in a perfect world, you want to out all these predators. 
but they're hiding in plain sight. Yeah. And there are grown adults who are not saying anything and allowing them to do that, knowing that's who they are yeah. and not saying anything. So the only thing you can do is protect your child the only way you can because you don't know who they're going to encounter. Right. You don't know who's their teacher. You don't know who they're, who's babysitting. You know, you don't know who right. these people really are. So the only way you can really protect them is to have those honest conversations and tell them about how bad the world is. Like, but so, at the same time, trying to protect their innocence at yeah. the same time because you want them to remain And it's hard to do both. Yeah. It's hard to do both, but your kids, you, they have to be prepared. And it's it's all about in the way that you have the conversation. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you can't speak to them in adult terms because they're not adults. But just saying something as simple as if you are, if you, someone is in this area it, and it's not one of three people, mm-hmm. then you need to let somebody know. That's simple you're not going into any details you're not we're not talking about world worldly views Mm -hmm. this is just if a then b it's protocol yeah protocol so let's so let's kind of because i i don't want to necessarily be fair but i just want to be comprehensive right so they kind of started off the documentary like r kelly's life and like Mm -hmm. his upbringing and they talked they talked like how he when he was younger he was like more shy like didn't really have any bark or bite um didn't really like know how to read anything like that and then I think they mentioned that I think it was him and his brother were both had some type of molestation going on but like parents didn't believe them or or anything like Mm -hmm. that um which seems to be a a common story um of young children that are being molested that these things kind of get swept under the rug. Um, they're not really addressed and or prosecuted or anything like that. So do you think like kind of that whole situation had any manifestation as to like what's been happening absolutely. or what happened later on? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was a psychologist on there and she actually, she spoke on that. She said um, that, you know, most kids, when they are in place in that victim role, um, when they get older, they do turn into the predator because they don't ever want to feel like the victim again. And I definitely think that's what happened to him. Mm-hmm. And also, I mean, it's it's an awkward thing and it's difficult for men and even little boys to speak about being molested just because of like how society views women and men. Like it's easier, I think, even though, I mean, there's this whole, the whole issue about like people not believing women as victims, that's a different subject, but it is easier for a woman to come out and speak about being abused than it is for a man just because women are naturally viewed as, as vulnerable Mm -hmm. and men are viewed as the protector. Mm -hmm. So for a man to come out and say that I'm vulnerable also, I wasn't able to protect myself, and I was abused and molested. I don't think that's a, something that's easy for them to do. And so they suppress that. And it's, it's not because, it, I mean, women, when you're molested, you may not necessarily become the abuser because you, you're you like able to yourself. accept being yeah. a victim. Mm-hmm. But men are not mm-hmm. able to accept being victim. So I think a lot of that played into it. I mean, even if you, if you could see how his brothers were speaking on there, them being victims themselves still couldn't really sympathize with the women just because of that dynamic i um i kind of like when when they were first talking about it i was just kind of like i don't know like i mean i i definitely understand that there can be a correlation um and i definitely agree that there can be a correlation but I guess like my the the internal struggle that I have is if you know that this happened to you and you know that you did mm-hmm. not like the way that that felt and you did not like the feeling that that gave you, like why would you inflict that on somebody else? And that like that's I guess sense. that that's just the, that's the biggest like thing the hurdle that I can't yeah. cross is like I don't understand if you this is something that upset you that was sad that happened to to someone that you love even if let's say it didn't happen to him but it happened it happened to his brother because his mm-hmm. brother said that he came to him like this is happening to me and like he brushed it off so like 
even if this didn't happen to me, but it happened to somebody that I love, like my sibling. Mm -hmm. While and like the pain that he came to me and the pain that he was in when he came to me and he talked to to talk to me about that. Why would you want to like inflict that on on another person, especially these people that you don't even know? I mean. Like, the, that was a family member, they said. These are yeah. people that you don't even know. I mean, without justifying it, because I don't, like, let me preface this by saying, yeah. under no circumstances is what Robert Kelly did mm-hmm. acceptable, and he should take 100% blame, and to be quite frank, he needs to go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> like, agree. And be stuck in the Jessa his entire life. Like, I could care less what happens to him. People, him and people like him should be on an island together, yeah. like, out of society. But anyway, um, I, I would think that the reason why as being the victim, you could turn and victimize someone else. It's because perhaps, like, if you, because that happened to him so young, it, it, was, it became normal. Like, maybe yeah. he felt like, this is what adults do to children. And now this is my new normal, and I'm going to continue this pattern. But at the same time, you wonder, you have to know, like, he knew it was wrong. He knew it was wrong. He, did, he, kept, it under, he kept it under wraps. He so had, you know a, like wrong. you talked about earlier, like, he wasn't doing it by his, he had a team yeah. of people creating this whole other life Mm -hmm. and he he intentionally targeted certain women based off certain characteristics and i'm not i shouldn't say women girls because that's what they were they were girls but you know he would ask them certain questions to kind of figure out okay this is someone who's insecure or vulnerable Mm -hmm. and the parents are not really in their lives think of you know maybe they only have a mom or Mm -hmm. they only have a dad mom is struggling always working I can get her. Mm-hmm. And I think um, towards the end, they said that girls who did not fit that criteria, they were able to leave the house and yeah. come as they go because he knew he couldn't trap them into the house. Yeah. But the girls who were probably from poverty, one parent struggling, um, insecure, had other issues, they were the ones that he was able to trap and live in that hole. Yeah. And I mean, it kind of would, feel like it would have to be that way because i mean like the way sparkle was talking she she sounded very like that she was sure of herself mm-hmm. that she knew that really wasn't going to be so it was almost like he found somebody that was like close to her so he's like i can't get you, I can't but, get I get you get but i can get her exactly. yeah that's exactly what exactly. it sounds like and i i will definitely so let's fast forward <laughs> we backtracked so let's fast forward to the trial. So, and I want to talk to you, legal counsel. Could you? <laughs> Esquire. Um, so I guess, and I guess like a lot of people, I think I was too young to understand what was going on when it was actually happening mm-hmm. back then. So I don't really even think I paid much attention to it because I was like, I don't know, it's that means- like I was like just trying to get to high school. Yeah. Um, but re rewatching like the footage of the trial, it was kind of like interesting that they had all this uh evidence, they had all these people coming up and like uh testifying and saying like this also happened to me, or like, yes, this is this person. Mm-hmm. Um so why do you think that it the trial wasn't no, I don't want to say successful, but why wasn't he convicted? Um, I think from that trial there's like a couple of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first thing um, is it's a major thing too because I you know I have some friends who are prosecutors and this is one of their struggles. It is oftentimes difficult getting the victim to want to cooperate with you, mm-hmm. and the victim is probably the most important witness in that trial. I mean, you can have spark i'm sure she got there and testified and other people did but you need the victim to go in there and say that and you need to be and yes they had this video footage that should have been a smoking gun right but the victim is the only person that can say that is me me. on that tape and because she didn't get up and do that and she didn't want to cooperate it's difficult for them to legally prove that that is her outside of other people's testimonies because anyone else it's like the people that i know you i see you every day it's it's all secondhand it needs to come directly from her and saying that this is this is me um and then the other part of it is jury bias so jury bias is a real thing i mean as lawyers we do what we can to try to circumvent that and try to weed out the jurors who you think are going to be biased but unfortunately um 
the jurors that are often selected are not jurors of our peers. Yeah. They're not black women. They're not of color. They don't look like us. And so they're going to pass judgment on us. The same thing happened in the Trayvon Martin case. They put his best friend on there who was on his who was on the phone with him when he was gunned down and who was probably the best vic- the best witness for that trial. And they didn't believe her because of how she looked and how she spoke. Same thing happened in that trial sure, with all those black sure. women on there. They said they didn't like how they dressed yeah. and they didn't believe them because of that. And that's why, I mean, the law says that you're supposed to get a jury of your peers. But because of how county lines are drawn, and, you know, it, you don't, that pool doesn't, it's not always your peers. I mean, I've, I've rarely had a scene of jury uh, when I was litigating, I've rarely seen a jury where there was a pool of a lot of black people. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. I, Duval County has a lot, yeah, of, black a lot of black people, I, a lot of people to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was in a trial with over, the pool was probably 100 people because it was a large trial and it was intended to go for a few weeks. And black people were still a small minority. Now, thankfully, there wasn't a case where it was us on trial. Yeah. So that wasn't like the important factor, but still it was still point, a randomized pool. Yeah. That's so tough. Yeah. And it's it's really like difficult. Like I really respect um what you as lawyers do because I feel like it's like a crapshoot every yeah. time. Every time y'all get up there, you can like present the best case, have the best evidence. Like, I feel like that's what I've learned the most from all my little shows I watch. (laughs) It's like stuff that I'm looking as like, you know, an educated, informed person. And I'm looking at the evidence that's presented. And I feel like, okay, this is open and shut. Just like everyone in that courtroom felt like it was open and shut. R. Kelly's going to jail. Like that's it. But the jury, and then you have to and then to find out that it's not, it's like <laughs> what? <laughs> so I mean, you could be on videotape and still not have to go to jail. <sighs> Gotta do it with these speeding cameras. They really do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have this problem here. Sidebar: I just have to light it up a little bit. It's getting too too heavy but it's always funny because whenever i go back home like so i'm from the maryland dc area for all of our new listeners um i always get caught by a speeding camera because i'm not used to them and it is. it's it's now not in jack it's not in jacksonville anymore. oh i know that that's no that's my <laughs> problem because i know it's not here so like when i'm at home if i'm not like paying attention like if i'm looking at my gps or just like talking <laughs> or like on the phone and then i'll see a flash and be like damn i remember i got caught by one before and i was just like well how do y'all know it was really red yeah. when I, maybe it was yellow yeah that happened to donovan <laughs> before they got rid of the cameras well but i'm glad yeah. they're gone yeah that's crazy <laughs> though um anything else you want to talk about um no i mean i think we 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 covered uh, the bulk of it. I mean, it's a very, it's a very deep topic mm-hmm. that can go in different ways. I see people take it in the context of age gaps and dating. <laughs> I don't necessarily think this brings that conversation up because it's not no. the same thing. I mean, a twenty-eight year old dating a fifteen year old, I think that's like an obvious no-no. Yeah. But a twenty-something year old who meets a thirty year old, mind yeah. your business. It might not be. Yeah. You know, it's everything is. Everything should be looked at for what it is, and there isn't no grand line rules. I mean, I'm I'm in a relationship where I'm dating someone older, and the circumstances of how we met, there was nothing. I mean, I was in law school. Yeah, <laughs> I, I <laughs> nothing think I was shady pretty there. Mature. <laughs> nothing shady there. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think when you're a certain age, like as a teenager, um. There are definitely, there's just so much that you go through, like, life-wise and learning about yourself, learning about Mm -hmm. the world, that you, who you are at 15 and who you were at 23 is, you're two different people. I thank the Lord I'm not 15 years old. Right, okay. (laughs) Because she's 15 years old, Shari was, I don't know, she's crazy. (laughs) She's she's crazy. She's just like, you know. I was mad. I was at my mom's house. 
have a chance to let me do anything, but I probably shouldn't have been doing anything. Yeah, That's right there in the house. Like, you guys are so strict, <laughs> but I had every reason. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's, in the house. <laughs> I just, I, I feel like, you know, if you are going to be a teenager and you decide to date an older man or older woman, just to always remember that consent is a thing even if you're in a relationship and mm-hmm. if there's something that you're not comfortable with or something that you find out later on down the road that you know what I am still in high school and this is a grown ass man you know you could always get out of the and you can he, always get out of the out of the situation like that yourself, was the biggest why thing why would a grown ass man want to be somebody like me. who has homeroom okay alright <laughs> like, no I can't even get a job I can't like, even get a worker's permit it doesn't make any sense <laughs> I mean, if there was a bright line rule, I think it would be that uh, a relationship is inappropriate if there is any kind of like power ability for the older person to manipulate and have power over the younger person. But it's just so difficult. Like you can't yeah. you can't place a you can't place any type of structure on it. whether a person is going to exert. We all have the ability to mm-hmm. be manipulative and to exert power. Even it doesn't matter if we're R. Kelly or you over on the north side. Like it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like we we can all exert power struggles, but I think what we have to do is like we said from the beginning when you notice those red flags or if you're starting to feel uncomfortable, mm-hmm. like don't put those feelings to the side to make the other person feel comfortable. Yeah, that's because that's, that's what I kept a, hearing in the point. documentary was like, I didn't want to make him mad or I didn't want to make yeah. him angry. For what? You were mad? No, you're right. You that were angry? A, that's a really good point. So if there was any rule, it would be if you feel uncomfortable, yeah, listen to get that. out. Like I know, like my boss at work, she was telling me about, I don't remember the name of it, but there's a book and it's about that study. It's like how we now, like people in society now, they kind of ignore their instincts um, to be polite and yeah. not to come off rude and not to hurt someone's feelings. But really, you don't need to suppress your instincts. You need to listen to them. So if you, because a lot of times if something is wrong, you know when you feel it's wrong. Yeah. So that is the rule. I mean, that's the rule. If you're in a relationship and you feel like it's yeah. wrong and you meet someone and you feel like, um, I don't know if this is right. Yeah then it's not right and exactly. you should walk away. Exactly. And I definitely agree. Um, and I just, I wish that, um, again, when you're 15 and you're kind of caught up in that world, I can, I can definitely see how it would be hard to, mm-hmm. you know, say, you know, F this, I'm out of here. Like, I, I see that. Um, but at the same time, like, I would just hope, and we would all hope that for ourselves and our children, that if we were in that situation, that, you know, we would be able to just, like you said, if something doesn't feel right, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter if you're the Pied Piper of r and B. I I mean, let's talk about the Pied Piper yeah. now. What does Pied Piper Listen. mean? <laughs> What's the story of the Pied Piper? <laughs> <laughs> He told us. He did tell us. He, he actually like us. threw it in our face. He did. He threw it in our face, which is like the really messed up part about it. It's like, it's like and then he tried to get on the song with our fave Jay Z, talking about some chicken killer not guilty. Which mm. I don't want to go into that because it makes me sad. No, I don't want to talk about this. Whole, I don't want to talk about this whole Jay Z tour. It makes, us, it makes, but it makes me sad. I was for yes. whatever reason I do remember being happy when Jay Z kicked them off the door. Yeah, because he was probably like, oh. <laughs> No, because that was like at this the time. This is raggedy. Like, Jay Z kicked him off the tour. Thank God he didn't need him. <laughs> yeah, crazy, crazy. Well, we're. I'm definitely. Well, I'm sure we both are. Are you know keeping the victims in our prayers yeah. and just hoping that through our conversation, just kind of talking and rationalizing it out, that hopefully mm-hmm. we were able to drop some gems and and um, then just for anybody who watched it and it invoked or um a feeling because they've dealt with that before mm-hmm. like just speak out speak a truth um and come forward i yeah. mean i think if you're dealing with this right now then i mean i think you should speak up and speak about it and don't tolerate anymore don't be a victim yeah definitely this is the time like if there's any a time that you should speak up and say anything, this is the time to do it. 
Um, I think you'll have so many people rallying behind you, people that you know, people that you don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, And if there was any, if there was any a time where people might halfway believe what a woman is saying, especially as a black woman, just shout out to my shirt. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I didn't get the memo. um, Yeah. (laughs) I think this is, this is the time where, where people will actually listen and ask questions later. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like this, this is the time. No, definitely. Definitely. Um, But in, I thank all those women and families for like sharing their stories. Um, And I hope that as time moves on, that more people are able to share their stories because I feel like um, when you hear those stories and you find out like it wasn't just you, Mm -hmm. the next generation will be able to do things differently. Cause I feel like our generation is already kind of like learning Mm -hmm. from like our parents generation. And I feel like our kids will learn from us. So we kind of have to like set that example Mm -hmm. and like create that safe space again Yeah, for, so that the next generation won't feel scared to come and talk to us. If something bad has happened to them. And I will say before we close out, yeah, like, just for sure. about because uh, like a lot of this too is just about like people like black women women really are yeah. like the most hated people ever. Because when you think about it, so like when an unarmed black man gets shot, right? Terrible, tragic. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. Everybody, at least among the black people. Mm-hmm. So not even not counting like the super conservatives who always say ignorant things. Yeah. All the black people, no matter what that man was doing, no yeah. matter how he ended up in that position, they're able to empathize and sympathize with him that he was wrongfully gunned down. Yeah. And he was. So why when a black woman comes forward and says she was wrongfully taken advantage of and put in a position that she should not have been in, you question it's- her, you call her fast, you say she should have known better. And but you the, won't say that the black man should have known better. No idea. And I have and that's like my whole thing is like I'm 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 just not sure. I'm just not sure where where society is drawing this line. Like it's always like if a woman says this happened, it's like, well, clearly you wanted it. Like if you didn't want it to happen, and it doesn't matter how many movies show us differently. Mm-hmm. How many documentary show us differently how many people in our own family show us differently like when you want to assert your power then you assert your power and that's it so either you gonna assert your power and we both gonna assert our power right. against each other or and then hope that i don't die in the process or am i just gonna be like you know what like i'm really just trying to get home tonight right it's just like i just wish that there would be some kind of like we believe you black men believe yeah, us now but believe like, us stand too. up for us because all them girls on there don't believe he didn't do it blah 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 i was like oh they are the worst embarrassed i am embarrassed <laughs> <They're the worst. laughs> no shout out to you <laughs> So that was actually a really great conversation. I was kind of nervous. I was, you know, it's a touchy conversation. It really is. But, very touchy. And there's so many dynamics. It made me um, really sad, honestly, to watch it. I think I cried a few times. Yeah. It was, it was really sad. And just like, I think for me it was like, like I said, I only watched halfway through, but like after that was literally just a conversation that we just had was like, Y'all hate black women that much that you going to let this man who more than likely has done what everybody mm-hmm. has been saying that he's done go free because you don't like the way that I dress exactly. or you don't like the way that I talk. I just want to see them. It's like just, we, we march for you. March for yes, us. Yes. Like it's, <laughs> it's just like you don't. There's no. There's just no sympathy. There's no, there's nothing. It's just like we, when we come into a room, especially both of us as like professional Mm -hmm. in a space that's largely does not look like us. We come into a room, we're expected to conform. Nobody ever has to conform to the black woman. No, we have to. No one ever has to like 
change what they say or what they do or how they dress. No. We don't require that of anybody. Now, sometimes your little friends will come in and we're like, hey, girl, you know, you don't have to do that. Like, it's fine. But we require that of no one. There's tw- when we come into the space, it's tweaking and every part of us. Mm-hmm. It's like, don't be too forceful because mm-hmm. now you're the angry black woman. Now you're the angry, don't now be you're too, defensive. Don't be too helpful because mm-hmm. now you're the mammy. And you're doing too much. <laughs> it's just, mm-hmm. and like, don't, you know, don't be too, like, you know, urban because now you're the ghetto black girl. Yeah. And it's just, where, just what do we be do? Who do we be? I just want to be <laughs> Shari. That's I it. I just want to be me also. I That's just want to be me. Oh, but I can't think of it right now. Okay. So, moving on to lighter topics. Yay! So, our next section, we're going to talk about travel. And this week, we wanted to talk about staycations. I love a good staycation. Which is equally important (laughs) as destinations. (laughs) And sometimes, staycations, low-key, are kind of lit. Well, they're a lot less taxing because, like, Traveling back from your vacation is exhausting. Yeah. So all that relaxation and freshness you've got on vacation is gone mm-hmm. just by going Be through traveling. TSA yeah. and Custom and Border Patrol because yeah. they are so draining. Annoying. <laughs> Super annoying. Um, and I was telling my friend actually today that I'm so happy I'm not traveling through, through, through this uh, whole government shutdown situation because... Oh, TSA agents are already out of pocket. Yeah, they are. They're already out of pocket. So you can't, can you imagine TSA agents not getting paid? Oh, yeah. They're going to be such jerks. So <laughs> they're already just not thank, nice. the, thank the Lord for foresight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. so our staycation. I mean, Jack, the beautiful thing about Jacksonville is yeah. there's so many places to staycation. Yes, I agree. You can go at staff at St. Augustine, which is mm-hmm. so historical. There's beaches. There's like this little city with like a historical yep. scene. Lots of little bars and stuff down All there. All those restaurants. Everything's on the water. Everything's on the water. So nice. Mm-hmm. And then you can come a little up. Yeah. Uh, Ponte Beach or Beach, Ponte Jacksonville Beach, Beach Atlantic Beach, yes. Neptune Beach, yes. so many different places. Yes. I think the biggest thing is like convincing yourself to like, because I, I have thought about that, like, like paying basically. Mm-hmm. So like, if you don't want to stay home, but like, if you want to go to hotel, like paying for the hotel, even though you live 30 minutes away. Yeah. Like, I think that's like the biggest hurdle, but I also think it's rewarding, especially if you do end up like staying on the beach or something like that, just being able to like walk on your balcony and like be just at the beach. Go out there in your robe. Like, wake up in it. Exactly. I've been wearing Tavares down and we are going to staycation at One Ocean. He doesn't know it yet. <laughs> I'm wearing him down. Where are you going? <laughs> One Elsha Hotel. I want to stay there. I haven't been yet. Yeah, I haven't I will, been. I don't know yet. I'm, I'm wearing. I'm working okay. on it. Let me know. <laughs> Let me know. But yeah, <clears throat> staycations are super important, and they're really good for self care, which mm-hmm. is what we always talk about. Um, just having like into your getting your mental health in yeah. order. Like sometimes just not being in your same space can give you a little jump start. Um, and like we say, like, I mean, we're very lucky. We get, we live very close to the beach. Um, so our staycation is, was actually pretty dope. Yeah. But even if you don't. <laughs> and then it's like even if you don't, Beach like, too. And like the Ritz called. No, is it Amelia? It's we're, Amelia. The Ritz is in Amelia. Yes. yes. So that's on my list also. Yes. It's, it's worth it. Okay. You know, they had a yoga um, retreat there the other day. I want to go again. At the Ritz? Yeah, there was a yoga was it overnight? there. Yeah, it was like a couple of days. Mm-hmm. I think they do it like Depends a couple of times. Because you, you have to yeah. catch the Ritz at the right time. Sometimes they are, they're like OD. It was the Ritz, so. <laughs> but sometimes they're, <laughs> and you know, and that's what I say. Every time when I'm looking, I'm like, hmm, let me see how much it's going to be. And I'm like, you know what? It's the Ritz. You can do that. <laughs> like it's the red so yeah. what is reasonable it is, it is what it is <laughs> you're what it is cool. yeah so i don't know but staycations are dope um and like we say like even if you don't have a beach like going to like i mean i would still consider like orlando a staycation oh yeah definitely like if we go into like the amusement parks or just doing any- as far as like tampa huh tampa yeah also. tampa yes i, I would agree tampa is yeah. also a staycation Miami's a whole vacation. That's yeah. Far. <laughs> so any anything that you can, you know, take the day off and just mm-hmm. spend some time with yourself. Um, I think say I 
honestly wish I did more staycations last year. I did a lot of vacations, but I think like by the end of the year, I was burnt out. Oh yeah. Like I just, I did way too much. Yeah. Um, and so this year I'm definitely toning it down. Um, oh. and I want to, I just want to do more like chill stuff. I still toning it down, but it doesn't look that way. So <laughs> It didn't, and I caught myself. So mm. catch yourself, girl. You have to. Let me know if you need an accountability partner. I can say no for you. I'm really good at it now. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am like, I'm just like, traveling is expensive, first of all. I got to take days off of work. And then I started looking like, but what if I want to do this? And I already wasted days on this other trip that I didn't really want to go on, but I just kind of did. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. Well, what I did decide this year is like, if someone asked me to go somewhere, I'm going to say, no, I'm going where I want to go. That's fair. And so that's that's fair. That's a step in the right direction. Yeah. Where are you going this year? We can talk later. It's fine. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I don't want want the episode to be like, Two hours long. So, and I have no idea how long we've been talking. So anyway. Okay. So our, our tip for the week this week in honor of Robert Kelly. And TSA. Yes. And TSA. If you see something. Say something. (laughs) And TSA. I forgot that's a TSA thing. I should have known. Because I'm like, where did I get that from? But it's from the TSA. TSA. If you see something, say something. Like, please don't sit around like all these trash ass adults in that damn documentary. Don't become like, a trash ass adult. Just don't. Like, if, if your you, friend, if, if your friend likes little girls, if your friend is trash, it's not a preference. <laughs> if your friend is trash, shame them. And if they don't get the message, then you know, do what you gotta do. You gotta call police. You gotta call police. Hey, FBI has a anonymous hotline. Listen, do what you gotta do. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not in the business of calling police on black people. I'm really not. <laughs> but listen, you can get the action if you ask for it. You sure can. So if you see something, say something. And if you're in the airport with a bag that's unidentified, just watch it for like five minutes to make sure that it's or really someone acts like Drew Satana and just leaves their bag there and runs um, off. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> but Jewel's didn't know, dip, dip. But didn't know there was a gun there. I left my bag there, but I didn't know there was a gun. Yeah. All right. No. Yeah. We can't. We can't. We can't do anything about that. <laughs> no. no. All right. Anything else you want to talk um, about? Questions, comments, concerns? No. Yeah. Uh, well, we're, we wanted to say that we are excited for our 2019 yeah. season. And we're thankful for everyone who joined us the last season. Yes. And we look forward for you to continue to grow and join us and for all the new people. Yes. Also. And please, if you are loving what you hear, because we definitely love love talking to y'all each week please um share subscribe come out to the events um email us yes email (laughs) us dm us let us know what you like you don't like anything that you want to change any questions that you have you can send them anonymously we'll answer them on air yep and that's pretty much it. I'm just excited to be back here. I know I am. It feels good to record It does feel again. good to be back. So thank you guys so much. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.